Thank you for being with us today and taking the time to listen. I've been dealing with the subject of wisdom, how wisdom can be imparted to an individual through revelation from God, how wisdom can be transmitted from one person to another through the gift of impartation as we see in Joshua's life with Moses where Moses laid his hands on him, but also how wisdom can come when we seek God and pray for wisdom. The Bible says in James chapter number 1 and verse 5, says, If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given unto him. So the very fact that James, the leader of the church at that point, said you can ask God for wisdom, and God will give you, he will give you liberally, simply means that God wants us to have wisdom. The truth of the matter is that for the many, many areas in life that we experience, uh, we need wisdom. I recall uh, when I was the age of 12, after having a a fairly traumatic child upbringing uh, through uh, schooling and and relationships uh, that that weren't conducive for my nurturing and development, my mom, who was not a Christian at the time, uh, set me on the bed. Uh, and, and in this time of tremendous trauma of my life, emotional uh, disorder and, and, and mental upheaval, she said to me, to you to pray for wisdom and mentioned somebody from the Bible by the name of Solomon. And from the age of 12, and that's a long time ago in my life, it's close on to uh, 45, 46 years ago, I began to pray to God to give me wisdom and do that religiously, every single day. And and then when I became a Christian, I discovered James chapter number one, verse five, saying that if any man lacks wisdom, let's ask of God. And the truth of the matter is that we, we lack wisdom in, in the things that we, we are being led to become involved with or the things we do or the journeys we embark on. For example, when I left my teenage years and uh, went into the military, I need wisdom there to to conduct myself and protect myself. And so I had to pray and ask God to give me wisdom uh, in that field because I was no longer in school. I was now in another experience. And it was during those years that I met my wife, Chichi. Uh, We weren't trained on, on what Christian dating was. And so we had to pray and ask God to give us wisdom in that time of our lives. And then when we got married, nobody taught me what it meant to be a husband. And so it was time to pray for wisdom to be a husband. And trust me, I've been a husband for 33 years and I still don't have the kind of wisdom I need because Chichi's quite a complex being. And then I became a dad and we have four children. And I've had to ask God for wisdom to show me how to be a father because I wasn't given the right kinds of instruction and teaching what it meant to be a father. Uh, I wasn't taught how to manage money, so I've prayed throughout the years for God to show me uh, how to acquire it and once we get it, to manage it. So there's always a need to pray for wisdom. If there's any area in your life that you lack, just take a little pencil right now and jot down some areas in your life where you would need wisdom. This is the time to ask God for wisdom. It is scriptural to pray for wisdom, and I strongly recommend that every person pray for wisdom on a daily basis. Uh, sometimes we embark on projects that are larger than ourselves because it's a breakthrough that God has given us. Sometimes God will give us a vision and an insight as to where we're going, and that vision is so big that we can't put our arms around it to embrace the scope and the magnitude of that vision. That's the time to pray for wisdom. The book of Proverbs deals with principles of wisdom, and it is Solomon that writes uh, these principles uh, of wisdom and begins to direct younger men. He begins to direct princes. He directs those that are in government. He directs those that have responsibilities into the path of wisdom. Uh, Solomon didn't just decide one day to write the book on wisdom. What happened was in Solomon's life, who incidentally was probably the most ineligible person to be king, uh, based on whom his mother was and based on the affair that his dad David, King David, had had, with uh, Bathsheba, it didn't appear that Solomon would be eligible to be king. But when David put his hands on Solomon and and made men in his cabinet uh, confer uh, their allegiance to Solomon, 
Solomon at a very young age. And David says to, to these men, my son Solomon's very young. Stand with him. Uh, there are certain people around him that need to be removed. There are some that he needs to keep. Stand with Solomon because he's just a young sapling. It is in this time when Solomon is now uh, crowned as king. The scripture says in 1 Kings chapter number 3 and verse 5 through 14 that when Solomon was in Gibeon, that the Lord appeared to him in, in the night dream and God said to Solomon, Ask me what I will give you. Ask me what I will give you. It was like God was giving him a blank check. And Solomon says uh, some outstanding things. He says, uh, Lord, you, you've made me a uh, servant in place of, of King David, my father. I'm just a little child, and I don't know how to come in and to go out before these, uh, your great people, people that you've chosen, people that cannot be numbered because they're so great in number. And I pray because of that, you would give me an understanding heart. And uh, First Chronicles talks about Solomon asking for uh, not just an understanding heart, but for wisdom. And in First Kings chapter number 3 and verse 10, the scripture says the speech pleased the Lord. And, and, and God heard the request of Solomon. And so we come back to James chapter number 1 verse 5. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men. And in 1 Kings chapter number 3 verse 11, God said to Solomon in the dream, because you have not asked for, for long life and you didn't ask for riches and you didn't ask for the life of your enemies, but you asked for wisdom. He said, I'm going to give you all the things above, but most of all, I'm going to give you an understanding and a wise heart so that the kind of wisdom I'm about to give you, which is a gift, is going to be far uh, past those that have come before you and those that are coming after you. And the principle is here is that if you pray and ask God to give you wisdom, he will give you wisdom. Second Chronicles chapter number 1 and verse 10 says this, Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I might go in and out before these people. In Second Chronicles chapter number 1 and verse 12, the scripture says, Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto you. And so if Solomon could receive wisdom and knowledge based on his prayer. And if James said God will give you wisdom, then God is sure to give you that kind of wisdom. And so I want every person that's listening to me, if you already pray for wisdom, add to your prayer that God will give you even more wisdom because the 21st century comes with all kinds of complex problems. The world isn't the same as it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, let alone 40 years ago. The kinds of complexities and challenges we have to deal with in society sometimes are mind-boggling. Uh, I'm an African, born in Africa. 1957 was my birth year. And, and from 1957 to now 2014, the kinds of challenges that people have today are nowhere near the kinds of challenges that I had as a boy and as a child. They, they fall in similar categories, but the way they've multiplied is not the same now. And so there is definitely a need for wisdom. Definitely a need, not just for knowledge, but for wisdom to apply the kind of knowledge that God has given. And so those of you listening to me, prayer for wisdom is really important. Uh, Daniel is another one that prayed for wisdom. In Daniel chapter number one, it was Daniel with his protégés uh, in a very antagonistic environment taken from a shielded society, a society that was very protective of, of who they were and what they were, into a very uh, interesting Babylon where it was anything goes kind of a society, where they were very naive in one place in one day and suddenly they have a, a whole cesspool of all kinds of lifestyles, illicit living, uh, morals and values that were so different to those that they were raised in. And in Daniel chapter number one, Daniel refuses to subject himself to the kinds of lifestyle he sees in Nebuchadnezzar's uh, a palace. And, and Daniel chooses uh, specifically his diet. And it is here that the scripture says that, that God raised up Daniel and his friends. Daniel chapter number one and verse 20. 
The scripture says that in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them to be ten times better than all of the professors, the magicians, the astrologers, the wazirs, the wise men, the government ministers that were around King Nebuchadnezzar. They were ten times wiser because God answered Daniel's prayer and gave him the kind of wisdom. In Daniel chapter number 2 and verse 20, when Daniel prayed that night for wisdom, God gave Daniel a vision concerning the king's vision and the king's dream. And Daniel says in his uh, prayer, he says, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. God has given us the ability to see. And Daniel concludes his prayer by saying, He gives wisdom unto the wise, knowledge unto those that seek understanding. It was Daniel that received an impartation of phenomenal wisdom when he prayed for it. In Daniel chapter number 9 and verse 21 and 22, after Daniel prays for the release of uh, the Jews from 70 years of slavery, Daniel is praying now in the 67th year of slavery. And when Daniel prays the prayer, Gabriel the archangel comes to him and says, Daniel, I am now come to you to inform you of God's will. And he says, but I am also come to give you wisdom and I've come to give you skill to help you in your journey to emancipate and liberate the slaves. So if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and abradeth not. Paul told Timothy, his spiritual son, and Titus, his spiritual son, he told them to seek wisdom and to pray for wisdom because wisdom is the principal thing. It is highly scriptural and strongly advised that we pray for wisdom. If God would do it for one person, he will definitely do it for the next. I pray for you that God would give you wisdom, wisdom that's beyond that of your years, wisdom that's beyond that of your peers. I pray that God would give you wisdom for every situation you're in, that God would give you wisdom to face every challenge that comes your way, that God would give you wisdom to solve the problems of men and women, God bless you so very much in your quest for wisdom. I'm Bishop Tudor Bismarck from Harare, Zimbabwe, pastor of New Life Covenant Church.